<laughs> so, so this is my first live interview, and I'm so excited because Kenny Biddle decided he would be with me today to do this to the, do this live stream. And um, Kenny, we've known each other for a long time. We have. You are one of the one of the few paranormal researchers out there. Even though we don't have to use the word paranormal, you could research all kinds of things. Yeah, and you yeah. have. I do, uh, yeah. but. Um, you're like an expert in this, and there's very <laughs> few people who do this. And tell us a little bit more about yourself. You're recently there uh, as a chief investigator at Center for Inquiry. Yes. So, yeah, basically, I, I work for the division called Committee for Skeptical Inquirer. So I'm officially under C CSI, which also puts on SciCon um, and publishes Skeptical Inquirer magazine. And, uh, yeah, I'm the chief investigator, which... Most of the stuff that I'm going to deal with has to do with like fringe topics, paranormal topics, ghost hauntings, UFO sightings, uh, monsters, and any kind of magical woo-woo kind of stuff like that. But I'm not limited to, to that. I can do other things like homeopathy um, and and even facilitated communication. I still want to do something on that, um, get into that, maybe sneak into a class and, you know, get trained <laughs> and see how that goes. So there's a lot I can do. Plus, I do a lot of more projects around the office because I am in uh, Buffalo, New York and Amherst, where the CFI headquarters is. And I have taken over a lot of the space here. Uh, there's display cases out in the in the lobby. You've been here, right? Yeah, but not since so, you've been there. Yeah, I, I, there's display cases outside my door. Um, so they if were empty. Here, and they were empty. They were completely empty and I had heard people were upset because there's nothing. It's like display cases, but they're empty. There's nothing to look at because we have events here almost uh, at least once a week. They were um, filled. They were filled with homeopathy. <laughs> yes, they were homeopathic and uh, ghosts. Artifacts. <laughs> homeopathic ghosts. Yes. So I was. Uh, I started taking over, and um, everyone here just encouraged it. And I mean, we even got more display cases. We took some display cases from the old section of the building that's not used, um, brought them up here. We got an, another, wait till you get here again. There's a huge 10 foot long one that we just got, um, picked it up from a church. <laughs> um, so, and it's got like, like things from alleged exorcisms and stuff in it now. So uh, it's very, it's a very cool backstory when you tell people that, um, and I, yeah, so I take part in a lot of things, outreach, I'm encouraging more uh, authors to come and, and write for Skeptical Inquirer and to do videos, mm -hmm. um, getting speakers for SciCon. So I, I love this job. I love being involved with everything and everyone that's here. Um, and also, I've, I'm proud to say that I've started the official Nerf Wars that go on in this office. I think you did, yes. Yes, yes. So we had a major one today, um, but everyone survived. So. <laughs> it, it's all good so that's that's a little bit about me I so mean, you I, have your own channel i do i do um, which, uh so i have the the show called the skeptical help bar which is now sponsored by skeptical inquire mm -hmm. um and every friday night i go live for two hours and i sometimes have a guest which i've been which, there Yes, you've been yeah, on. Um, we went for three hours. Yes, yes, because you wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm in California too. I so, you know, I, I don't have that time, you know, it works to my advantage right. here. Right. But yeah, I have a guest on sometimes and I like to I like to have the overall bar theme, like the the ambiance of your local bar. Uh, when you come in there, we just have a casual conversation. I don't usually have questions written out beforehand. I just see where the conversation goes. And mm -hmm. then the second part of the show is for viewers. They can ask questions. And and my wife, Donna, she sits on the side right off camera and she feeds me questions from the audience and we talk about it. And then we also have open mic night, open mic night when my, I don't have a guest. Does that mean their name has to be Mike? No, no. Um, although that would be funny. Um, <laughs> we do have a mic, I think. That's only, right. only Mike's invited. Yeah. But that's that's pretty much me, and it's for the audience just to come on and they can ask questions via chat, or I put the link to join the show in the chat room so anyone can pop in and discuss something more in depth. 
Right. So, it's fun. It's fun. It is, it is fun. It's casual. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they think us skeptics are really these awful people. And, you know, I, know. We're, we're, I think we're yeah. friendly. I think we are. You have I a know. dog that loves you. I know. I know. And I have me. three cats that so, sometimes love me. I mean, it's not like we're bad people or anything. No. Um, and you know what? That's an interesting uh, topic because I, I come across this a lot where I'm prejudged about being I'm a, this mean guy. I'm mean. I'm nasty. I'm just a, a evil skeptic because all I want to do is just debunk everything. We're in everybody's day. Show everyone that they're stupid or, or whatever. And it's simply not the case. And I we're think the opposite for people like you and I, we're, we're just completely honest. We're mm -hmm. blunt with what we say. And as as other people are free to say, hey, I believe in this. I believe in a God. I believe in ghosts. I believe in fairies, whatever. You can believe in whatever you want. And they, they're they proud to say it out in public. Likewise, we're the same way. We can say we don't believe and we don't think they exist in public. And that's that's where people see us. Right. Like, you're you're evil. You shouldn't be saying that. You should be respectful. Meaning... You shouldn't you shouldn't say anything that disagrees with what I believe in. Keep it to yourself. I don't like, get that's that. what I get. Yeah, you so. know, I, I started this channel just a little six weeks ago or something like that. And it's oh my gosh, the views I've had are incredible. I mean, I uh, you know, it, it gets to this point where you have to have four thousand watch hours yes. in a year. I'm there. So Good. I'm at like three thousand eight hundred and something watch hours. It's ridiculous. Okay. So I think that there is there are people who are finding my videos are actually interested in this world of breaking down paranormal in the psychic world. I'm, I'm focusing mainly on the psychics, but I I think a lot of the people who are watching my channel, hi people who are watching the channel, um, I appreciate you're here. I think most of the people who are watching are not skeptics. I think a lot of them have never been challenged before with this yeah. idea that there is debunking of videos or debunking of, or ex if we don't want to say debunking, but explaining videos or audio of psychic readings. Some of the comments I'm right. getting are, it is obvious they are not, um, have, have been challenged before. It's, and it's, it's really interesting because I, I think it's a channel. Uh, that's starting to attract people who never would have found your work or my normal work when I write for Skeptical Inquirer. It's the people who are watching. I've got a lot of people from the Philippines who are watching. That's my my biggest uh, subscriber as far as or biggest watcher outside of the United States. So mahal kita, everybody out there. Um, yeah. I don't know why. The the viewership is a lot of them are Filipinos, but I have a feeling that Seatbelt Psychic and some of these other shows are showing in the Philippines right now, like they're running on right. TV, right? You know, syndicated now or something. Who knows? And the people are going, "Oh wow, what is the Seatbelt Psychic with Thomas John? This is amazing because it does look amazing if you don't really pay attention to what's going on." And they're going to YouTube to find the longer form videos. I know he's big on TikTok right now, and it's a whole environment of people. Almost all of my viewers are women, hmm. and they're all under 35. Almost all of them are under 35. So hello, female 30, under 35 people out there. A lot that are 18 to 24. Hmm. I don't think they've really seen this before. I don't think they've right. ever. They're like, this is new. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, it, and it's like you and I have lived in this world for a year, long time year, right year. Yes. <laughs> it's like no none of this is new and the questions are asking or the things or statements are making are really interesting i i i don't know i just think that like you're on tiktok yeah. you have a channel on tiktok yep. right yep. what's it called it's uh kenny biddle csi now if you look that up you'll find me Right. Okay. That's, that's it. I've got a psychics explained, um, TikTok. It's only got a few videos on it. It's, I don't know. It's like, I need somebody to, you do these, you know, you're, you're good at getting this turned out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like work. <laughs> it's, you know what? It's fun. It's, I have, so I have a, this board over here that you can see, um, yeah. that's my, my schedule that I try to keep to. And Tuesday is TikTok Tuesday. And I sit here, I come in the morning, I get on and I start looking at the videos that 
are are just uploaded or or fresh and i'm like oh all right well they're saying this place is haunted or this was a sighting or this poltergeist is in there and if it's the general stuff i i kind of ignore it you know because it's like repetitive there are so many channels that do the same shit um, i'm sorry stuff um but you that, can say shit on my channel <laughs> <laughs> that uh that i ignore most of it but sometimes i come across something new and i'm like i don't know how they did that hmm let me think about this for a couple minutes. And I think, and then I go out into the hallway and I start trying out things. Um, and it's great because like even the staff here, they know what's going on. They see me oh just- Oh God, here comes Kitty Bitter. They're like, oh crap. But actually it's it's even better because they'll be like, well, what are you doing? Can I help? Can I do, can I do something? Like Eric, who's our outreach guy, um, he's on the other side of this wall and Nicole Scott, who's down the hall a little bit. They are my best volunteers because they, <laughs> I I will pop in like Nicole's office and go, Hey, um, I need you to do something. And it's going to sound weird. And she's <laughs> like, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> and then even with Eric, I'll just, cause when I'm, when our doors are open, cause our doors are open most of the time, I'll just yell like, Hey, can you help me with a video? He's like, Oh yeah. What do you want me to do? <laughs> and his head will pop in like, what, what can I do? What can I do? What's up? So we spend the whole day and just go through and recreate these videos and put them up there and show people not only like, I don't just like showing a recreation. I have another camera that's on the side, taking a wide view and showing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So you get to see the whole behind the scenes thing. I love that. I absolutely adore it. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about is investigations. Sure. You and I, like I said, we've got a long history of all kinds of things and we could talk for probably 15 hours on oh, this. Yeah. And if people want to hang out, I mean, I'm I'm good until I'm here. a while. But I really want to, you know, you've been involved in uh, several of different things. One of them you were involved in was Operation Peach Pit. And we will talk about that again on another day. So anybody who's out there who's watching this right now, please subscribe to at least to my channel. You can check out Kenny too as well. But subscribe to my channel. Hit the little boom so you know when we're live or when we're, we're doing a, a, I've uploaded a video. Because you're not going to want to miss this discussion that I'm going to have with Kenny and his wife and probably one or two other people who were involved in the investigation we did of Matt Frazier. And this yeah. is the article, this is the investigation that was the second half of the New York Times article that um, hit the magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a huge deal. Right. And it is called Operation Peach Pit. And I will be talking with them in more depth because Kenny and his wife and several of his friends were the people we sent in to do the investigation. And they had a unique experience that, um, you know, Kenny's written about it, but I really want to go in depth about it. But what I really want to do now, I've been having some conversations with different people who are mediums and, and people who are not quite aware of what skeptics do. And, you know, that word has a connotation that some people don't like. I, I'm happy with it. But you are one of those investigators that does it to investigate the heck out of it. And one of the few people, and you're, there's, there's a, there's a handful of people who do this well, and you are one of them. And you're also a really terrific writer and you pick unusual topics that I hadn't heard of before. And the way you investigate it is terrific. I mean, you follow a lead and then I'm like, okay, I'm satisfied. And then you follow the lead further. And then I'm like, oh, he went and did that. And then you follow the lead even further. I mean, yeah. there's no way. I mean, you could take what you've done into a court and <laughs> there would be no problem. The judge would just go, really? Oh, come yeah. on now. This is obviously, I don't, I don't have any work to do. This is all done. You know, the whoever it is that, who is um, taking you to court or whatever would just be laughed out of court because of the information that you supply is so detailed. And one of the things, and I don't think, I don't think that people are used to that. No. And also like this one medium I'm talking to, she's like trying to give us the best evidence of what uh, a psychic detective does or, or, or psych, uh, psychics have solved these cases or helped solve these cases. She gives us the link and then I start going through it and looking it up. And she's like, well, what are you doing looking at all? <laughs> why, why are you challenging this article? It's a, it's an article. It's, it's, it's gotta be factual. It's like, you know, her equivalent is it's on the internet. So it must be real. 
You, I don't you, get why would somebody touched, not challenge something? You touched on it and, and you're saying it right there. The, we're, we're interacting with people that are not used to being challenged. They're used to having their word taken at their word. And that's it. Go no further. I right. said so. Therefore, it's true. Why are you questioning me? And I mean, from my perspective, I I have it's not a unique perspective, I don't think, but I I was a ghost hunter. I was in that world where I was I believed all that stuff. I thought psychics were real. I believed, you know, little specks of dust um, were, were ghosts floating on photographs and video. I was there and realized through my own origin story, which you can find out there. Yeah, very interesting. Um, in other interviews that I was wrong and how wrong I was. And how I covered up how I was wrong, you know, like when I knew I was wrong, I ignored that and just kept going. And I had that same sense of why are you questioning me? I just told you this is real. Are you calling and, me a liar? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what it is. That's what people feel. And I, I think especially with this person that you've been dealing with, because I've been involved with that. Mm -hmm. um, they feel like you're you're saying, well, they're lying or they don't. Honestly, I think it's it's borderline temper tantrum because they're not used to being challenged. And now they're they're having an episode. <laughs> they're having a fit because you you asked for something. We asked for good evidence. They gave us a, a to be honest, a shitty <laughs> link to an article that was really bad. And when we questioned it, when we started looking, especially you, you went all Energizer Bunny on on the article. Twenty one. Uh, I only did twelve. I only did twelve of the. Yeah, 25. but that's it. Like within the next morning, I woke up. I'm like, holy crap! <laughs> she went through it half the. List. I didn't do the detail that you would have done, but it was pretty obvious. And no, I mean, I mean, you did good. You did. It was really it was good. obvious that where we were, and then once. Once this article says, okay, the article comes out, it's Reader's Digest, it comes out with 21 cases of psychics helping solve crimes, right? Mission, That's basically yeah, what yeah. it was. Mostly yeah, murder mission, victims yeah. or whatever. Murders yeah. and missing murder. And then murder. several of them, you would read it and you go, okay, this is obviously wrong. This person's lying because of all these other things. You don't say the word lying, but you just say, well, here's the evidence. And they've been caught doing this and they've been caught doing that. Like the one who was trying to bribe the police officers. Please <laughs> tell them that I really was uh, involved, you know. And, yeah. and so this next case, you look at it, it's the same psychic. So it's, I'm like, well, right. we have to look at this because they're already fraudulent. They, they're yeah. already obvious. So let's just skip to the other. So I didn't really do well. Right. I did like seven. And that's, 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 I mean, that's what I would do. Once you found evidence that they, they tried to bribe their way into a story that they were not involved with, to try to take credit. Right. You're done. Your your credibility but is shot. You and, know, and, so why should, <clears throat> yeah, should, yeah. should we take your word for anything you say? Right. We're done. Yeah. Right. So right. I really want to talk to you about this one thing because, oh my gosh, Just you've got thing? a lot of different <laughs> articles that you've, you've come up with. And this one right here is just one of many that you've done, but this is your most recent. And I'm going to put this in the YouTube link real quick so people can look at this. And Wait. you should definitely subscribe to um, all the stuff that Kenny does, but yeah. I'm going to screen share this really, no, I better put it over here. Yeah. I try to use, there. I try to use edge when I'm doing, um, screen sharing because we've caught, we've caught, um, Thomas John seatbelt okay. psychic. I caught him on a, or one of my team members caught him on a, he was doing a webinar that was a almost nobody's going to watch right it was <laughs> it was a webinar but what he did is he showed his computer screen like <laughs> you could see where he was googling things and you could see what was on his computer screen and we could even see his inbox with all the complaints people are wow. giving him and i have all that in other articles but my point is i don't want to share my computer screen right <laughs> and you can see all my tabs that are you. open and all that because yeah. i don't really want to have to deal with that so I i'm just because <laughs> I get I get that way too. Like when I'm watching a video of, of like some investigation that has issues and stuff, even if it's like one of those cutscenes that's a split mm -hmm. second. And actually, I mean that that worked because I, I was doing a, I was investigating a, a case by 
my buddy Zach Baggins. Um, oh, Zach, <laughs> and it's not true. haunted museum, but he he did a documentary, and his cutscenes were documents from that case, so they were only on screen for a second, maybe. And I uh, I loaded the the entire documentary into my editing software so I could go frame by frame to get it, and I pieced together documents from that that showed that he was faking stuff or <laughs> embellishing and it was just that's the amount of detail that goes into it and you don't realize like that's hours and hours of your oh, day yeah. you know getting into that going frame by frame and just watching hours and hours of someone's mm -hmm. videos um because that's how dedicated we are i mean that, that's and and that's what's right? necessary Absolutely. To, to, I have a team that has done this for me. I know. <laughs> Thankfully, I have a team and they do a lot of the research and I just did a lot of the taking credit for it because, <laughs> because they don't want anybody to know who they are. And well, that's so, good. That's good. That, that's fine because it keeps them yeah. protected and, and so on. But right. they but they release a lot of this information and then I go back and I have to verify it. But that's how we found Thomas John's uh, computer screen. When I went back to the video to actually create a video that showed him talking about it, then the half a second that it was yeah. on the screen and then the video of him talking about it. I wanted a clip to show this was in there. And I'm like, my gosh, my team member found that thing. That was like a second. Oh, it was incredible. Anyway. So going cool. back, Oh, you and I are going to be awful. We're going to be talking. <laughs> and um, I can see that already. So this is the article that I want to talk about right now, because this is, this really explains it says it's loading. Okay. It okay. I see it. Okay. So this is an article. So you write for Skeptical Inquirer. I also I write for Skeptical Inquirer magazine. We we do a lot of things online and um, the articles come out usually online. Sometimes they're in print, but print just takes months to, yeah. uh, to get done. And there's a restriction as far as size. And so I tend to tend to have my content published online as a lot of yours do. So your column is called A Closer Look. Yes. Um, you're probably a lot way in there, but this is interesting because I don't have any clue before I read it of what this was about. And I was like, what the heck is this? And every time, like I said, you start reading it and then you go, wait a minute. He went there. Oh my gosh. And he went there and then he went more. Okay. So let's talk about this because I think this is a good example of how, um, you in particular and some other uh, researchers do this kind of uh, research because you're not just taking, okay, so here's the claim made and you find this odd claim and you probably do some kind of Googling or something to see if it's already been covered because, you know, there's been people in the past that have, right. have done some obscure topics, but this was a fairly recent one, right? Yes. yes. Tell me a little bit about how you found it. So I kind of stumbled upon it. Uh, my my social media feeds, well, like Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. I I subscribe to all kinds of people and teams um, because I want to see not only what other skeptics are doing and the science community are, is doing, but I also want to see what ghost hunters and Bigfoot hunters and UFO hunters are doing. So I'm, I right. follow their pages, um, and that includes psychics and and, and whatnot. So in my feed at random, it's not even somebody that I I, I knew. Um, but a, a post popped up and it was this, it was that missing person, uh, meme that was up there. It was a generic, uh, uh, frame, I guess. Cause the kid's face is, is. Oh, I thought you had done that. No, you, I didn't do scratch that. Out no, the child's face. That's not the actual child that was missing. Um, that's just oh, that's a generic, a generic child. Yeah. Um, oh, I missed that. <laughs> but I read it and it was a testimonial, uh, about how this psychic came from out of state and helped, uh, look for a missing teenager. I get, I think a grandmother or a granddaughter. Um, and then the, the team was found half a block away from where the psychic said that, that she was. Um, and that by the time the psychic left, she had helped, she had the entire police department believing her, you know, everything that she was that's saying. That's what the psychic said. That's what the psych, that's what this testimonial said. The uh, testimonial it was promoted by somebody that was not the psychic. But later I found out they were partners and they do this like, uh, I guess, uh, appearance um, marketing or PR kind of thing. They're, they're like an entertainment 
small company that goes out to different <coughs> conferences, um, paid to go out to conferences and do readings. Um, so they market themselves. And I guess this was a, a promotional post for the psychic and showing like, oh, look, she's, she solves missing persons cases. And uh, it was funny because when I went to her website, th this was the only one on her page. <laughs> like there wasn't like a, a bunch of missing persons, which, you know, if I had that power personally, if I had the power to find missing persons, I would, that would be my life's work. Um, but well, yeah, yeah. You would think that they yeah. would be doing this. You would spend an enormous amount of time at doing the that. place. Off. Right. If they right. could do this, Kenny, be honest with me. They sure. wouldn't be working at a, they wouldn't be do, doing a TV show and, and, or hosting no. an event for 15 people or 500 people. Even they would they, be, well, they the, would not be doing a stage TV show. They would not be working a booth at a, a, a paranormal conference. No, at, they at would be, the they military would, be would have had yes. taken the possession of their, of them and they'd be hidden <laughs> away somewhere. <laughs> they would, they'd be, Come on, let's get real. People are constantly asking me, right. this, well, which is the real psychics? And you're like, I mean, really? It, it, Come on now. Think about that. Really? No, no, no. It's, it, it's sad. It's sad. And it really like, you're probably going to get, see me start getting angry as we talk about this more, because it's, it's one thing to exploit people. But it's it, it really bothers me when you start using a, a child's case um, to to make yourself look better. Absolutely. Um, yes. So I get pretty worked up when when we start talking about stuff like that. Um, Absolutely. And I'm constantly getting comments from people saying, why are you they're helping people and why are you picking on them? You're just so mean. The phrase I've been hearing lately is I'm salty. You're salty. Well, I, I'm like, OK, is that you know a what? Take phrase? A I don't know. Take a big lick, bitches. <laughs> it's just going to get saltier from here. And if you don't like it, you know, that's your problem. Not oh, our. my gosh. Uh, okay, so go back to your thing because we will okay. get, we'll keep derailing and I'm going right. to trying to hold us to this. So, all right. So I saw this post and I, I commented because I was curious. And, you know, I see Facebook, things right? like this and I'm like, you know, what about I asked for information, said, you know, there's no details in this. It just says like the state of Oklahoma which is a pretty, that, that's a lot of area, you yeah. know, and there's no names, there's no dates, there's nothing here. Um, what can you give me so I can try and verify um, that this claim, like this actually took place. And she, and she immediately gave you the name and all that information, didn't she, Kenny? Oh, well, I would love to say so, but <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not the way it happens. And it never happens that way. It really doesn't. Um, the responses I got were, they they posted an article they also told me absolutely no they're not giving you information or me information because of privacy laws um which i'm not sure i'm still not sure what they were talking about because i mean i've seen missing person cases covered in the, in the news where they they tell you the kid's name um or they tell you what the police department was investigating they tell you information about the case um but I just wanted something, but they refused. They flat out refused, but they did post an article, which strangely enough had <laughs> the date and the, the county, the police department. I mean, a lot of information that had to do with the case, which I don't understand why they couldn't do it. But but they but they didn't expect you to actually go that far. Right. In depth, and right. they probably and weren't I, used to being challenged. Right. And they so this was a real missing child at one point. Yes. So it was okay. a real. She didn't just person. make it up. But no. how are you supposed to know the difference if, if there is no detail? Right. right. Like if they hadn't posted a link to this. I mean, they yeah. could just have said, hey, I solve crimes all the time, but they're all under age minors. So we can't I talk can't about it. it. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you any details. I mean, I see that a lot when I go to psychic fairs because there was there were psychic fairs back in the Philadelphia area where I where I was from. Um, and now I'm up in Buffalo, New York, and I've already been to one here and I'm going to another one this weekend. Um, oh, so but I see signs up all the time saying worked on missing person, worked on murder cases. But when you ask, they give you no details, none. Um, what, what kind of phrases do they say or how do they wiggle out of that? I mean, if unless yeah, basically they don't, they don't want to talk about it. It was a, it was a minor. So they don't want to give you details because the, the family doesn't want to be known. Um, so there's a lots of reasons given. And 
I mean, I can understand if a family does want to, you know, stay out of the media. I get it. That that's that's cool. But all of them, like everyone, how did you hear about it? Like, it's- right, it, it, yeah, exactly. Because once they're a missing child and it hits the media, it's yes. in the media. So once it hits the media, unless they're definitely. only being consulted by people whose children are missing, who Perhaps. don't ever. Um, in other words, the child is missing. I'm going to go to my psychic. I'm not going to report it to the police or ask right. or nationwide right. or or even a citywide. Here, here, everybody help me find my child. Here's what she looks like. and Which is the absolutely wrong thing to do. Yeah. It's like, go let's to just go police. to our psychic. Unless yeah. my psychic is the one objecting children. That I, I think there was. I think Radford uh, investigated a case like that. I'm not sure. I remember something like that coming up. Um, anyway. So, yeah, I, I so I asked for information. I was refused except for the article. And from the article, I a quick read because it wasn't it wasn't like an in-depth, uh, like like prize winning piece. It was a basic like local uh, news kind of thing. Um, but it did give me enough information to go on. So I had commented, said, you know, all right, I get it. I don't understand why you refuse information. You know, it's all in the article. Exactly what I said. Right. I screen capped. Um, I screen cap everything. Me too. Um, and I don't think they realize. <laughs> no, they don't. Conversations, they don't. As soon videos. As I, as soon as I, I do not assume post, it's going to be there later for me. It's, right. Get it now. So, I, yeah, I, I mentioned that I was like, all right, well, now that I know the police department, I'm going to reach out, contact them and find out, you know, what went on. And that was that got the psychic. That, that, oh, yeah. Yeah. The psychic commented, like, what business is, uh, is it of yours? Like that was her comment. And I was like, well, this is, you know, this extraordinary claims like this are my business, literally. Right. Um, so I don't know what you had to hide because it obvious, it's obvious that you were offended by this or you're you're getting defensive now. So now I'm more interested in, in what's going on. So that's what I did. I, I reached out to the police department. Um, I gave them the information that I had, told them where I was from, what I was doing. Um, and they put me in contact with the detective that worked the case. And I, he, I, he reached out back, he reached back to me and said, Hey, you know, I'm busy right now, but I'll call you tomorrow morning. So I spoke to him on the phone, on the phone. And I went through the article. I went through the claims and he answered my questions. He was a very nice gentleman. Um, he was really cool. And I mean, he was, he's so nice. He didn't want to, he actually said, I don't want to talk bad about anyone. I just hear the here are the facts, you know, and I asked him questions about how, how much did she help? And she didn't help at all. She was there, but any information that she provided, they already knew there was no new information whatsoever. Um, second, she, she made, made claims that didn't turn out to be true. Um, like the the health of the the young lady that was missing, um, that she was hurt, that she was bleeding. Oh, yeah, that would scare the family. Yeah, uh, yeah. You said and, that in the article. Yeah. If you if you've consulted the psychic because you really do believe. Wait, they consulted the psychic, or did this could psychic give uh, throw themselves into the investigation? Which was it? Two. They threw themselves into it. So the the family did not consult a psychic. So the psychic the family, saw the story and said, "I'm getting a feeling or whatever, and I'm going to." So the family, the grandmother of the family, I guess knew the psychic's daughter and reached out via that way. And the psychic said, "Oh, well, I'll come out," and she came out and okay. inserted herself into the case. Okay, um, and. It sounds like she tried to give information or tried to give predictions, but they didn't want anything. I mean, one of the things she said was, um, I feel that she's by water, um, by the lake. That's what she said. She was by the lake. And when I, I said that to the, the detective, the te- <laughs> well, the detective's like, uh, we're a lake town, so <laughs> everything's by the lake. <laughs> that didn't help us at all. I mean, and when you look on the map, the town is literally on the lake and, and everything around it is just there. So and and I mean, when it, when I hear by water or by the lake or, or something like that, it's it's to me, it's a silly. big rock. Yeah, it's a silly thing like, oh, the, the there's they're by trees. 
okay i mean there's a number six somewhere yes you know th this is all information that is it can only be relevant if you if you retrofit it later and it doesn't help anything it's a completely useless superpower if it was real waste uh, of time yeah it doesn't yeah, help wasting place and worrying um, the family because by saying yeah. she's by a body of water doesn't that say she's dead um well she never said she was dead well but what does it mean say, she's out having a picnic at, yeah, she's at the by lake the water. she's but tied by the water, up you know what is she on a boat what what is what is what is she saying so uh, we don't know Can she say and w when she said that the that she was hurt and that she saw blood she saw blood i mean if i heard that and i'd I be believed, freaked like, out real, yeah i'd be freaking out like oh like holy crap my granddaughter or my daughter is is dead or dying she's injured and she needs help now we got to find her um but but no she wasn't hurt she wasn't bleeding she wasn't hurt at all but the, uh, the family didn't know that okay yeah, family yeah. Didn't know. Not until yeah. after okay so um basically er, the psychic just didn't help at all and that that was the point of it, it is that i found out through the primary sources because that's what you always have to do primary sources that she did not help she did not lead them to the missing person she did not find them the missing person was found by a a, a neighbor that called in a tip to police uh, and so then uh, somebody in the town noticed that a, an abandoned trailer had a light on they knew it was abandoned they knew the family they knew nobody was supposed to be in it it was just left but there was a light on so they called the police said somebody's in the trailer like a camping they, trailer yeah yeah so the police showed up found the team so no psychic help no psychic powers solved this case at all um yet this psychic was using this alleged testimony testimonial and i say alleged because I, I i don't think i actually addressed it in the article because it was starting to get long um but after i commented on the social media post saying that i was going to look into which, it which and seems to be me, gone by the way your comment it was gone it was deleted yeah i saw the i looked at deleted. the facebook post and there's like two yeah. comments on there now and, and they're then, saying positive things reposted it was actually reposted a few minutes later with a different version of the testimonial oh and i was like well son of a bitch she changed it uh, now i'm now i'm wondering if there was actually a grandmother that wrote this like i don't i don't believe that now yeah. I, there's no validity to that or i think they made it up themselves mm -hmm. um to make it look good and then they posted again the picture of the meme and yeah my comments were all gone and i i was going to I thought briefly, like, oh, hey, thanks for taking down my comment. What are you afraid of? But then I was like, I don't feel like wasting an hour ar arguing back and forth with these people. They're just going to block me. The psychic did block me on social media, so I couldn't actually reach out to her and talk to her. Um, but the so she might not have even contacted a grandmother. Is that what? I, you're yeah, saying? I don't know. We don't I, know. That's, that's and you're not going to go call up the grandma. I'm not going to. I'm not. No. But I'm I mean, that is. Her that's the family i mean i could i could get into it and find it and dig deeper but then it's not worth it. Served I mean, your purpose. <laughs> the detective told me everything i needed to know you know he he pretty much flat out uh falsified her claims and said nope she didn't do any of that so i'm satisfied um you're you're very fortunate that the police the detective was helpful yeah yeah i mean they can they, they don't have to be and he didn't uh -huh. have to call me. So I'm, I appreciate that he was. Um, and then, yeah. And then there was another part. I don't know if you want to get into that. Yeah, but yeah. Go ahead and mention that. The other part, which really bothered me, is that I, I started looking into the background of this, this psychic. And she did get a degree. I want to make that clear from the start. She did get a PhD eventually. Oh, she did? In what? She did. Um, human psychology human something oh yeah so it's in there oh wow you got it up here um doctor divinity equals a bishop or what so here's your here's yours doctor <laughs> that's mine oh um, she did receive her doctorate in there you human go. services from capella university there you go do you All know right. if that's a real place capella that is a university? it's an online university it is a real accredited university so uh i didn't have any problem with that it's the in-between time because apparently she she had to drop out of 
the program for a family emergency, which I'm not going to knock. I'm not going to dwell on that because things happen. I know life gets in the way. I get it. When she went back to try to finish, there was some kind of mix up where her loans had all been spent and she couldn't finish school, which I don't understand. I don't I don't know why this couldn't be fixed or the mistake if it was on the part of the college. Why didn't they fix it? I don't know. Didn't feel like getting into it because, again, the article was running long anyway. Um, but on her own website, she states that she went to her psychic work. And decided that since she couldn't get her doctor title legitimately, she would just get it the, this way because God wanted this to happen uh, a different way. So she signed up for a doctor of divinity from the Universal Life Church. Um, which, uh, when you read through out the of article, all the mill, do, uh, the diploma mills in the yes, world. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, people know Universal Life Church. I think. Yeah, I think I think pretty much everyone knows that's the easiest way to get to be an ordained minister. Um, it takes almost like five seconds, maybe. I mean, 10 if you type slow. Uh, so once you're an ordained minister, then there's nothing stopping you from becoming a, a getting a doctor of divinity, um, which is an honorary title. So it's not something you get through academics. You, it, It's usually a organization. Yeah, a university or like a religious organization recognizes work that you've done over over time, not just something like one time thing, but you've dedicated a lot of time and work and you volunteer, whatever, and they want to acknowledge that and they award you a doctor of divinity. But <laughs> with the Universal Life Church, all you have to do is shell out $20, uh, make sure your name is spelled correctly and click buy. And once you do that, it's sent to your house and you have it. And mine mine is currently, you saw the picture when you shared the article, mine's actually currently in the window to my uh, office. Um, and, and it was so popular that Eric next door also became <laughs> the same thing. So his is in his, his window too. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, I think, I think uh, the article says like for seven years, um, she used this title. I think that's, I think that's what I, Oh my gosh. You know, you know, remember what I was saying before, once you find out that the person that you're dealing with is a liar, you do not have to listen to anything else they ever say. And I mean, just, (laughs) it's just, it's hard. Yeah. From June, even though she's got a PhD afterwards, a real supposedly legitimate from an online thing. That means it's just like your whole credibility is gone. Unless you were to come back and I guess address what you did and admit it and say you were, you know, apologize maybe then, but it's, it's just, it's, Oh, I um, hope she runs for office someday. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> then you're gonna hope be able to, somebody's going to find your article and go. I mean, oh. it's, it's really bad. <laughs> and I see this a lot in, in, among the paranormal community. I see people do their LinkedIn pages and they have uh Dr. Divinity um, or ordained minister. They have this up there as like a legitimate creden- credential and it's not, it's, it's pure bullshit. And it, it's just hilarious. I'm glad I got this for myself because now I'm going to add it to the rest of my or- ordinations because I have like six or seven ordinations from. Oh different my gosh! I didn't realize churches. you were you had so many letters after your name these I'm days. I'm holy Dr. as shit, Doctor Biddle. <laughs> yes, Doctor. I Biddle. didn't realize I was speaking to a, a Doctor Biddle. I, and it's just it's ridiculous to me. Like when people come up, and I, I've dealt with it before, where someone introduces themselves and they they use the term doctor and i'm used to it. i mean that my first instinct is oh doctor doctor of what and oh doctor of divinity oh like really where did you get that from uh, did you get that universe <laughs> that that yeah i think um, i have a doctor of uh, i i think mine might have no they don't expire right i got mine from um Brian Dunning's organization. I have a doctorate in psychology, uh, parapsychology. Oh, and okay. I got a I Thunder have... Thunderwood Thunderwood. I think Thunderwood. It's yes. Yeah, Thunderwood. It's somewhere. I have it on my Facebook page, and I've had people say, "How did you get your doctorate in uh, parapsychology?" And I'm like, "Well, I fill out a form, and I got the doctorate." 
I have, I did a, a article on diploma mill diplomas because mm-hmm. of, because of something like that. I had a, there was a ghost hunter on TV that kept saying on the lower thirds of his uh, screen, it would come up parapsychologist. And I kept questioning it until I reached out to him. I said, why do you, where did you get this degree? Um, and he, and he explained, oh, I don't, I didn't go to school or formal training. Um, I just study the, the paranormal and I consider myself um, just as good as anyone else. Um, and he was really arrogant about it. I, I really hated talking to him, to be honest. Um, but I've seen this a bunch of times. I'm going to an event in the next couple of weeks where there's someone that labels themselves a parapsychologist, but they're not. Um, just as much as I'm a plumber or a pilot, um, because I'm not just because I flew in a plane doesn't mean I, I'm a pilot. Um, and, and that's the mentality that I see here with the Dr. Divinity from the Universal Life Church and, and these other parapsychology. I have a, a parapsychology uh, diploma um, from what is the Center of Excellence in the UK. And I took a, a course. I took a class. And and I I wrote an article about it, but I paid I think like fifty dollars or something like that, and it was uh, supposed to be one hundred and twenty hours of coursework, and I did it in <laughs> I did it in like two and a half happy hours, because <laughs> oh! <laughs> I, I was on I was on a, a work um, work trip, and during happy hour I sat in the bar with my laptop and I skipped all the material and just went straight to the testing, and I tested. I had a 99.9 percentile. Um, I didn't, I didn't write something uh, like enough of a survey or, or something. And they took a point off, but I, I got honored. deserved that degree. I know. I know. You must have deserved it because you didn't have to do the coursework. You went right to the quiz. I went right to the test and said, all right, let me see if I can do this. And, you know, slightly intoxicated. Boom. <laughs> passed. So I got a, I got my parapsychology and, and religious titles here um so how does this other woman fit in this i'm sorry to interrupt you but i'm trying to keep us on track the other woman which other woman you said there was two women oh so there's yeah there the one was just so the psychic is the one that's got the the psychic is one and then the other one is a business partner and she is how is she connected to this she's the one that posted this thing on social media okay and the one that told me that she wouldn't give me any information um about the case and that's jennifer lee yes yeah and she's and not got a doctorate she's just some lady she, no no she just she is a partner like the two of them are partners in this um marketing whatever thing and and they promote her, the psychic as something to go to conferences and you should have out to your paranormal conference for readings and all this stuff so yeah yeah that's what i wanted to understand what was her motivation for doing this because was did you just catch them at the very beginning of of the scam of theirs? It's this is like the first thing they've done, so this is the beginning. She has done conferences. I know she's been out and she said like it's just sets up a booth and does readings or does private readings. Um, you can go to her website and sign it's up for a reading. Yeah, for the site. Mary Barrett. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you can actually she's an actual somebody who says she's a medium. Yes. And this was going to be the beginning of her career of in the psychic detective world. I don't know. I honestly don't know how long she's been doing it. At least since, um, so she she, uh, what was the? Uh, let me see. Missing team. Let me look it up to make sure. So ordained minister. Twenty. Uh, Twenty fifteen. Is when she didn't. I guess when she got her. Uh, doctor of divinity so at least from there maybe a year or two back she was doing uh some psychic work um i'm going to send you the link to her website so you can see it it, it, it was referenced in the article but i'll send it to you okay um, for people so you can look it up oh wait there is that it that's it i gotta make sure some of these i can't see i'm not allowed to see uh so we have a do we have a chat yeah we do have a chat can i put it in the chat room yeah put it in the chat and i'll go ahead and put it on the video okay there you go all right so i just sent it to you um let's see events like she has a bunch of events coming up 
uh, the haunting at the mill Paracon. Uh, she's in Oklahoma. I don't know. I think she's in Kentucky. Okay, let me let me share this so that people can see what I'm looking at. I also put the link in the uh, link in the description of the video. So let's see what it says here. Wow, that's a nice looking. That's it is a nice, nice. Looking website. It's wow, slick. she spent some money on that. Yeah, that is nice. What is this little? Oh, nothing in my shopping cart. Oh, that's a shopping cart. Yeah. So these are the other people on here who was wasn't Jennifer? That's not the Jennifer, same. Person, that's yeah, that's Jennifer Lee's. I oh. think. Yeah, there you go. So that's that's the other girl. Um, she's doing. The she's partners. the Jennifer Lee on Facebook. I'm co-owner of Raven Paranormal Events yes. and Dr. Mary Bar- Barrett LLC. Yep. Wait a second. I'm co-owner of Raven Paranormal Events and Dr. Mary Barrett LLC. LLC. Yeah. So that's the name of her organization is Dr. Barrett or LLC. Yep. Okay. So this is somebody she's promoting as Raven Paranormal Events who will do ghost hunting. Ah. Oh. Yeah. If you go oh. up under under the, the tab, events tab, you'll okay. see a whole bunch of events that she's going to be at. Oh, um, I understand. Oh, there wow. You go. Yeah. You've got little aliens on here and everything, so you know it's real. Oh, and there's a Bigfoot, I think, or something. Yeah. Paranormal Museum of Cryptozoology, Paranormal Museum, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia. Oh, a master hypnotist and a psychic medium. Yeah, she's got a lot. There, there was so much to get into. Um, Gee, look at I all this. One, two. So, wow, man, she makes me look like I'm sitting still because of all those <laughs> events. That's really sad because. So if you go under, well, all right, so it's gone. But if you go under like her name at the top, it'll there'll be a drop down menu and you can go to ordained minister and it explains why she got that and because she couldn't get her real doctor title that she went this route. And I mean, it, for me, I was like, I can't believe you wrote that. <laughs> like you wrote that for people to read. Like, and, and this goes back to the beginning of our conversation um, about how some of these people don't get challenged. They're not used to being challenged. So there was no fear in putting something to be honest, was r- ridiculous to write. You don't write that um, like, oh, I didn't get the doctor title the way I wanted it. So I just went this way. You don't write that out there so everyone can read it. Well, apparently she does. Well, apparently and a lot of people, is. like you said, they do not expect to be challenged. So what has been the. Hmm? Hmm? So what has been the repercussions? Has there anything that is have you heard from anybody? I know this article has only been out a very short amount of time, but have you heard from anybody I mean, um, so I haven't heard from either of the people involved, um, the psychic or her business partner. Um, I have heard from other people. I've actually gotten a bunch of emails from people loving it and thanking me for putting this out there, um, which is nice. That That's real nice because I don't get <laughs> feedback, good feedback often. Um, I usually get the bad kind. Uh, but and that still lets me know I'm doing a good job. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been positive so far even from people in the paranormal community and funny enough, other psychics have said good job um, with this, which I don't investigate me. <laughs> Sometimes I, I think it is like that, like, Oh, good job. You know, like, I, I think you're great. I love what you're doing. Just don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened with that medium. Who's who we, we started out the conversation about. Yes. She was like, yes. I can't stand Thomas John. He's 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 doing this, this. This this this. Some people are fakers, but not me. And that's that's the wrong thing to say. And that's what she did in her video. The 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 video that are you really talking about the medium this, that yeah the medium that you ta- you've been talking to. Um, that she in her video she criticizes. Uh, I think three other psychics that had written books, and one of them happens to be Mark. Um, which was funny because as soon, as soon as I saw, like, I didn't see the full book. I saw like the, the tip came up like this and I was like, oh, I know that book. 
she's oh i have that on my shelf oh <laughs> now i'm really paying attention yeah but we were really paying attention she doesn't yeah but, but so, after criticizing other people she immediately followed it up with i know what i do is real what i do is real i know what cold reading is and i'm not right. doing it and i was like well wait a minute now you set it off. Now everyone, and I saw the list of people that you tagged in that video. And I'm like, I know all of these people are going to comment on this. They're going to pick this out. And this is what we're going to, you know, zero in on. And and we did. Like, show us. Let's let's see why you think. It, yeah. What, what proof do you have that this is real? That what you do is real? And it is really sad too, Kenny, because I, I asked her for a good, uh, the, the psychic meeting we're talking about. Um, who's she put out a video she puts out several videos but she put out a video of a reading and she said this is one of her good ones and i and i asked her on facebook how good is this is this your best she says it's nearly my best my best are private but this is like the best reading i've got that is not private that i've done and i'm like all right so i'm going to break this down i'm going to look at it and i'm going to go into detail and you're going to be okay with that right even though you might think that I'm um, being Thank critical you. or I'm being, um, uh, you know, dismissive, it's okay. Or, I'm yeah, letting yeah. you know, I'm going to evaluate this. She says, critique, go ahead, critique. And it's been a day and I haven't heard from her and I usually hear from her all the time, but I have <laughs> five pages of notes, five and a half pages of notes. And I, I write, I like to write, but I went through detail back and forth, back and forth. It's a 30 minute reading. It probably took me three hours. Yeah, and it was incredible. I found it. It, it probably would be a skeptical inquiry article or, or a video or something in the future. But I found it fascinating that this woman believes she's genuine and she knows what cold reading is, but she's cold reading through the whole thing. Yeah, and I don't this, think she understands this, that she's cold reading. Is this the one? Is it the the sitter or guy? Yeah. Um, Okay, I think I know Milan or something like that. All right, I think I started watching that, and and because it's on oh, our website, I, I, I like, watched it, so me. you don't have to. Uh, yeah, like but as soon as they started, I was like, "This is a cold reading. This is well, a cold, cold reading." reading. Yeah. And the, and the sitter is a motivated listener. Yes. Which I have. That's just something new I've come up with since I've started this channel and really started looking at uh, videos and readings. It's a type of person who. Well, he's paid, right? So he's once his reading. Yeah. He's paid. He's had lots of readings, he said. And he's a medium yeah. himself, I think, or, or, or he's a spiritual something. I don't know. He's into that. So when he, she would say something and he would say, oh, that makes total sense. And then he would explain it. And it was nothing, nothing like, like what yeah. she said. <laughs> so it was... I think I've got three or four cases of that happening where it's, and she goes, yes, like, like as if she's agreeing with them. And I'm thinking something wrong with me. Let me replay that. Because <laughs> how did I miss that? Because it was nothing like she said. And he just assumed it was about whatever he was in his mind. It's motivated, motivated listening. He yeah. heard what he wanted to hear. And it was, it was really incredible. I mean, it's a great video uh, that I've downloaded um, in case it goes away. Uh, It was a great (laughs) video. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Nature is a skeptic, you know, (laughs) it's uh, (laughs) a, so it's, and all the screenshots of all the conversations, but um, it's an interesting way that even the mediums are fooling themselves. Yeah. Some mediums think that they're really doing readings and either they don't understand Hmm. what that means or they're just fooling themselves or they're outright lying. I think there's definitely a mix um, and it really depends on, on who you're talking to. I think there's quite a few that do know that they're, they're bullshitting people and uh, yeah. they're just running hot readers hot readers you cannot be yeah, a hot yeah. reader <laughs> Tom Tom information yeah, Tom um, <laughs> you can't look it up on the internet and, and I think, say that you're you didn't know yeah i think others are and and i think this person that we're talking about um i think she falls into this category where she's been reassured 
over the years from family and friends so much that it is it's become it's become her her personal nature like she just doesn't there's no doubt and mm-hmm. she's being convinced um over time that she can do this and the the method that she uses which is cold reading like flat out cold reading yeah she no doesn't see reading. it as cold reading because she thinks Different. She's so convinced that she's getting some information because sometimes she says something and it's kind of right, and it ignores the kind of wrong that also happens. Right. But in her head, it's all justified. Um, Who knows what's happening realize. in her head? She may really be hearing something. Maybe, but I, I don't mean, know. Whatever she voice there is is just not accurate. Well, <laughs> so, it, it's it's a lot of it's just wordplay. Yeah. And I could see herself convincing herself that what she heard or whatever because again, when you're listening to one of these videos it's a lot of times it's emotional, it's happening very fast when you're in a reading situation and you don't have time to sit down and take notes and really really evaluate what's happening. And I think maybe in the medium's way too, that's like a you say it like you're into a jazz you know you're just into it you know you're not writing down the notes as you go you're just you're just going with it and it just feels like it's just flowing and it's natural and it's very likely that that might be what it is i'm it's not right but um it becomes more of a conversation between the two people and at the end the psychic is is claiming that they gave information yeah, where it was the sitter that gave information or corrected them, and then we we gloss over the correction part and just say, "Oh yeah, that's what I said," right. or "That's what I meant." Um, oh, yeah, and you know, it's hilarious because I took five and a half pages of notes, and as I'm writing now, yeah. like I try to transcribe, or but you know, your hands tired after a while, and you're you're doing this because I was really writing it down because I'm all right, I like pencil and paper, but as I was writing, I could see myself. Now I'm not fooling you. I saw myself summing it up on paper, like I'd say, and she was saying, and I'm thinking, wait a second, she, that's not what it was. Right. Here's, I I could see myself changing a little bit. And I had to, I had to go back and erase a few things. And I said, I'm summing up what I think that's going on or what I think they're saying when there's no summing up that should be done in here. This, we need to get this down exactly. Yeah. And this is what was said, exactly how it was said. And I, you know, maybe I knew what was going to happen in, you know, in the next couple sentences. So I was trying to add that in, but you can't, you have to have it exactly how it's coming out. And like, you know, we've been talking about this whole time. I don't think there, I don't think anybody does this kind of stuff, except maybe like 10 people in the world. Yeah. And you and I are two of them. That's, that's, you, you hit it. It, and And nobody's used to having this kind of thing done to them. They haven't done it to themselves. They have not looked at a video they've done. Like I will watch a video I've done like this one and I will look to make sure, you know, is the lighting right? Am I saying things wrong? What is it I'm doing wrong? You know, to try to improve your speaking when I do a lecture, the same kind of thing. But I don't think they go back and they really look at it again and see it as how they manipulated their words, how they (laughs) fooled around with it. Right. It's incredible. I do the same. Th- I mean, I I sit here and I'll I'll listen to a audio uh, track or a video, and I will back every ten seconds. I will listen to every ten seconds, probably like six or seven times, just typing it out exactly right. how they said it mm-hmm. with the ums and ahs. Oh my gosh, yep. all that in there because you have to because I want to be able to say this person said this, and that's why I researched it this way, or that's why I'm going in this direction. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to come back later and say. Well, I didn't say that, that word. I didn't say it that way. I said it a different way. And mm-hmm. if you don't have it transcribed exactly and saved, um, like what we do, then it's just, he said, she said kind of thing. And mm-hmm. you don't know. So yeah, that that's so meticulous. And you're right. They don't, n- not many people do this. We won't. It's, it's, time consuming. it's excruciatingly here. painful. It's, it's yeah. It's time you consuming. Hear them, it's the words in your head. I swear I dream. Yeah. With the sound of some of these people's voices. Yeah. It's it's awful. Well, anyway, Kenny, we should be getting going because I don't want to hold up you for days. And I will talk. It's okay. 
I could stay here forever. <laughs> no, we, we will talk. talk we will talk again. I yes. promise. And anybody we'll out there who's watching this, make sure you check out Kenny Biddle. He has got some of the most amazing content. You'll find him on Skeptical Inquirer. You can look and um, you can sort it by authors. Skeptical Inquirer magazine or skepticalinquirer.org. You can yep. find his channel. Um, he's got videos up on his own channel. I am Kenny Biddle. Yes. And also on um, TikTok as well as Center for Inquiries um, YouTube channel. Yes. You're all over the place. Kenny Biddle. Everywhere. I mean, we've done <laughs> we've done interviews. He's been interviewed. He's just getting started in this job, but you've actually been doing this for 20 years, 15 yeah. years, something like that. Yeah. But you're starting at CFI, even though you've been associated with CFI for a long time. You've been publishing yeah. there and so on. Yep. But, all right, everybody, Not please subscribe to my channel too, yes. because I would like that. I would really appreciate it. And if you have questions, put them in the chat. Um, under the video and we'll be happy to answer them. And we'll, if you don't want to reach out to Kenny for some strange reason, I don't know why, but, um, or maybe you don't want to be brought to his attention. <laughs> oh, you know, you don't want to be brought to his attention. So uh, if you're a medium out there and you go, oh, you have a, you're a medium too. Well, let me take your channel. <laughs> let me look at that. But you have questions. Yes. Please. And, and you don't want me to tell Kenny who you are. I can do that. <laughs> Reach out to me privately. All right. Well, thank you, Kenny. You're Say welcome.